Hey, thanks for watching Four Color Commentary. I'm Mark Allen, and I'm going to do something I've wanted to do really for a, a few years. Um, and I know th this video, there's some different opinions on how this particular thing should be done. And, uh, and so I've waited until I had a pretty good rating on eBay, uh, a good number of, of transactions, sales, that kind of thing. And, a, and you know, my, for 99% for of the time I've been on eBay, my rating has been 100% positive. And so I thought, well, we've passed a point now where I can go ahead and say uh, and make a, make a video about and suggest how you should best or how you should best ship a single comic, okay, that you sell on eBay uh, for protection. All right. So now let me say right out, at the outset, if you're selling something for, if you sold a comic for more than $50 or for $50 or more, always take out insurance on that. And ahead of time, make sure that they know that you know, you will, you will be, uh, you know, charging for insurance or what I do a lot of times on, on, um, on books like that is I just go ahead and I eat it. I just tell them, Hey, you know, sh uh, insurance is on me and uh, I'll take care of that. That kind of helps with, um, people wanting to buy from you. But let me just say this. I'm going to show you how I ship comics. And again, I've had comments on my, my, uh, eBay channel. Hope I didn't say YouTube channel before. But I had comments on my eBay channel uh, about specifically about what a good job I do packing. And so <clears throat> some say you should use a box even for a single comic. And I know you can buy single boxes. Uh, this is the way I go. And so we're going to go ahead and start with this uh, beautiful saber tooth. Uh, I think that's a Michael Golden cover, chromium cover. Okay. Uh, here's what I do. I start out. I get, I get uh, two good stiff pieces of cardboard. I get cardboard uh, from different uh, businesses. I just get, there's, there's always people that are willing to let you have their trash cardboard. Uh, it could be Walmart. It could be, um, uh, it could be, this is a place, there's a place in the town where I live here in town where I, that makes uh, plastic containers and such as that. I take, I get there. They get lots of uh, uh, cardboard boxes and stuff. I just cut them up and I use them good stiff cardboard for shipping. Okay. And so, um, in general, for, for comic books that sell below 50 bucks, this is what I do, uh, and I've never, ever had a complaint, okay? So here we go. I'm going to start by placing the book uh, on the first piece of cardboard, and what I do is uh, I tape it. Now, I could, in just a moment, I'll tell you why I do this, uh, tape, tape it all four sides, Take all four sides down to the cardboard sheet. Okay. Try not to get in too much of a hurry. Get her, I'm not shipping this to anybody. I'm just, this is just a demonstration. So, uh, all right. So there it is. Taped to the first sheet of cardboard. Second sheet of cardboard goes on top. And then those are taped together as a comic book cardboard sandwich. Okay. Now, why do I do this? Why not just put the comic in there and tape the two pieces of cardboard together? Well, because it'd be very easy for that comic book to slide around and even uh, whenever they, once they cut the tape, to slide out. Don't want a dinged corner or something like that happening upon, uh, you know, them opening their comic that they've been waiting for. Okay, so there it is. Okay, nice and, and sturdy. Take that, put that in a... Uh, what are these? I forgot what they are. Nah, I think these are nine by 12. Yes, nine by 12 uh, envelope, yellow envelope. Just regular mailer envelope. Slide that in, okay? Slide that in. I go ahead and, um, you know, I'm sure it'll catch up with me one day, but I go ahead and lick the poisonous glue. I know, ew, gross, Mark. That's okay. I do that now. It's not all. Now, of course, return address and then the uh, recipient's address here. I always make a point, besides having the cardboard there, and I've been praised by uh, post office employees for doing this. I always put in large print, either in a nice bold pen or even sometimes a Sharpie, do not bend across the top and diagonally across the back. Do not bend. Okay. Now, what's next? Next is this. I take packing tape. I take packing tape and I wrap it once 
around the top and the bottom. Okay? It acts as kind of a reinforcer. Just kind of gives some some, uh, some some extra reinforcement where where paper will tear um, this packing tape will tear much less easily. Okay, getting this all. Oh my goodness! I should have had a more controlled environment. Okay, <laughs> this is not looking great. Okay, that's all right. We need a little comedy in our lives. That's okay. You'll get the picture once I get it done here. All right, so one piece to uh, to uh, correct what I've done there. Very good. All right, that'll work. Okay. All right. There it is with the both ends taped, but we're not done. Now remember, do not bend has already been written on there. Okay. And this is already turning out to be quite a sturdy package. I don't know how to explain it, but somehow. This the um, the packing tape lends to the sturdiness. Now what I do now on all four ends because even though I've taped it around, I haven't closed that paper still exposed there. So what I do first of all on the on the two long sides, I pull a piece of tape that's about the length of the envelope, and then I fold it over the edge, and it makes a nice tear resistant edge. I do that on both sides, both long sides. That makes sense, both long sides? Okay. All right. And then I do that on the top and bottom. <clears throat> and what this ultimately does, again, it just, it makes the edges of this, of this envelope extremely tear-proof. Okay, now you've got all four sides taped up, okay, and they're like a they're like a thin vinyl, okay, all right, and then you got the the hard stiff cardboard in there. Now um, let's talk about cost because what I do is I generally end up being able to send a single comic sandwiched between two stiff cardboard pieces in this manner. I send it first class, okay, and that lands me in the five to five fifty area, somewhere in there, okay. Uh, five, yeah, five fifty to, to five dollars, maybe six if it's a thicker book. Now it will, it also may reach six if you want to add an extra piece of cardboard. Sometimes we worry, we want the seller to be happy or the buyer to be happy, so maybe stick that other piece of cardboard in there. But no, it's going to cost you. Now at that point. You don't go very far before you, you are out of the range of being able to send it first class. And you'll have to be bumped up, generally, uh, to, um, to something more in the $8 range. Now, let me say this about eBay. eBay doesn't always, for whatever reason, eBay doesn't always allow you to um, choose first class. I'm always very detailed in my description, okay, of shipping as well as the item I'm selling. And I tell them in the description, it will be, it'll be this much and, you know, I'm give or take a few cents. I've got it down almost to a science where I can tell them about how much it's going to be. And he, listen, look, if it's going to be five, five to five fifty or something like that, I go ahead and say six dollars shipping because I'm having to buy my own envelopes. I'm having to scrounge up my own cardboard, provide my own packing tape, that kind of thing. That kind of stuff adds up. OK, and so don't feel bad about going ahead and saying six dollars. But uh, I tell them in the, in the description, shipping will be first class, $6. Now, if eBay doesn't give you the option of, of um, pick, choosing first class, they have everything below and above first class, and for whatever reason, sometimes they don't. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I just pick economy, okay? Pick economy shipping and uh, put the amount. Generally, they'll let you put the amount in that'll, that'll charge them. And your, if your seller is... is um, observant they'll see in your description uh what you can uh, what you're willing to do and how you're going to send it how much it's going to cost them in shipping so there you go that's how i ship and by the way again uh i've never had a single complaint in over 20 years ebaying uh is that a word ebaying selling on ebay i've never had a single complaint about about packaging uh and i've even had comments uh positive comments uh, about my packaging so anyway um hope that helps you 
And I hope the, especially if you're kind of new to eBay or if you're just starting out, um, or if you're just selling on Facebook or whatever, it's a good way to ship your comics. And if it's under $50, generally don't have to worry about insurance. Over $50, I recommend it. But and whether you want to have them pay for it or you pay for it is up to you. But anyway, anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. Hey, listen, uh, if you go ahead and comment, leave a comment. I'd love to know what you think, uh, what some of your theories are. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, go ahead and do that. But otherwise, do what the kid is going to tell you to do, and we'll see you next video. Smash the like button!